So now let's look at this one, which is uh, unquestionably uh, one step harder uh, because even if uh, we still have only three unknowns in this SLE, in this system of linear equations, there is um, a, an additional parameter called A built into this system. So um, the, um, the challenge now is to solve this system dependent on the value of this built-in parameter A. And this, of course, as you may know, this makes it necessary to perform a case distinct, yeah, distinction. Okay, so we have to distinguish different cases depending on which, which value this built-in parameter A has. Let's start, uh, just start right away. So um, it's not necessary to make a case dis distinction right at the beginning, but it's important if you don't do it to take care that never you will um, um, forget to check whether one of these numbers might be zero, because if certain cells in this matrix, certain, uh, you know, certain numbers in this matrix get zero, this may have an influence on how you proceed. So I just try to uh, try and um, show you how, how to do. Um, by the way, one interesting um, and well, even um, good idea is before you start, calculate the determinant of this coefficient matrix. But again, I, I'm, I'm quite sure that you, you did not really uh, talk about determinants uh, in the lecture, but um, it, it, it won't take long until you do. And so um, in, in, in parentheses, all right, determinant of A is an interesting uh, point. And uh, you may, have you heard of the, the um, the rule of Saros, I don't know. Um, I, I just write it here. So let's call it like this, Saros, Saros rule. Saros rule is uh, the most, uh, the easiest way to calculate the determinant of a three by three, um, three times three uh, matrix. And um, I will not explain it here, but um, if it equals zero, I must say, depending on the value of A, you will immediately know what, um, what values of A, which values of A um, require a case uh, distinction. So that's a good idea to do, but we uh, won't, won't do, it, do it this way. And you will see that it's, it's even possible to do it without, okay? So let's start. This is my first element. I, I just go around, I, I just go through the, um, the regular Gauss-Jordan um, elimination again. I mark my tool, I eliminate in the first column, perhaps a little quicker now for the first few steps. Um, you know what I did? I just extract the coefficients to, to bring the whole thing in, in matrix vector notation. So then I will subtract the working row here and two times the working row here. And so I get my zeros in the first column. I, not, I, I will not explain the, 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 the single steps. Now you can make do it by your own. But one specialty, of course, is here I have A. I just have to use it, yes, just uh, instead of replacing it by some number. So I say A minus um, one. So just A minus one, put it here, okay? And uh, similarly here, I have A minus two times one. So A minus two. And I have to find a way to handle these terms. In, in, when I proceed, but we are done. Uh, the first column has been eliminated. So we can proceed to the next element on the diagonal, which is this one. And now we subtract uh, the whole working row here to get to get this eliminated. And also here, now it's, it's tricky. And I must honestly say, before I go on, um, I almost forgot to make a case distinction right now before I go on with eliminating. Because look at here, if this single number here gets zero, I already have a zero row. And we all know that a zero row means 
then, and, and firstly, it, it, it wouldn't make sense to eliminate anything here if this is already zero. And also, secondly, this would be a zero row uh, reading zero, 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 uh, which is even called a zero row um, at this point if, it's, if it has only zeros on the left side of the equal sign. And even worse, since this is a fixed number minus one, you can check it, yeah, if you make the elimination. Since this is fixed, it would even be a corrupt zero row. It would mean that suddenly the whole system of linear equations is not solvable. And that's the case. Um, I just put a minus two equals zero, which means if I put it around, a equals two. If a equals two already here, you can test it, yeah? And you have a row one, two, 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 two. Ah, do you see here? One, one, one coefficients here and here two, two, two. So the second row would be the, the um, double, uh, the, the first one, but the numbers one on the left, on the right side, sorry, uh, would be in contradiction. So you can even see it by testing that in this case, the whole system has no solution. Oh, that's sorry, that's in German. <laughs> it means um, we have no solution. Um, and, that's, and then it's done. So that means the first uh, special case has already been done. And now it's, it's important. Uh, before I proceed, I have to declare that from now on, A must be unequal to two. So this is what I, um, what I put here to say, this case has been done right now. And from now on, I only look at cases where A is not equal to two so that I, especially so that I'm allowed to do the elimination at this place, okay? So it, it, that it even makes sense to eliminate here. That's what I'm doing. So uh, just follow me. And then I can proceed and say, okay, I subtract the second line here um, by doing um, the usual thing. One minus zero stays one. One minus one gets zero. And one minus this term is one minus a plus one. So, um, uh, please be careful when subtracting this term and then removing the parentheses, you get one minus a plus one, one plus one is two, so you get two minus a. So, and interestingly, this is almost the same term as here, but right before we said that now a should not be equal to two, so that also this term is not equal to two, that's important, okay? It's unequal to zero. Uh, I, sorry, I wanted to say it's not equal to zero. Yeah, because A is unequal to zero. This can't be zero. Um, as a side note. Um, and then also here, one minus one is zero. Now to the third row, which is by this condition, uh, not containing a zero here. So I must eliminate. And this is a little bit tricky because I have to take the well, I have to subtract the a minus two fold version of the working row. Uh, so I, I have to take the working row by to multiply by a minus two and then subtract it to get a zero here. That's what I do. You see, zero minus okay, this this number times zero is zero. That's easy. But then a minus two minus a minus two times one, and that of course is zero. But now it gets here. It gets a little complicated, zero minus this term times this term. So in the end, it's minus, just think of a minus here, uh, minus a minus two times a minus, a, a minus one times a minus two, I thought it this way. Is it, it uh, originally minus sign here? But then if I proceed here, minus one minus a minus two times one, Please keep uh, uh, your concentration. So minus one, removing the parentheses, minus one minus a plus two. So in the end, minus one plus two gets positive one, and I have one minus a. So originally, this would be one minus a, but also here, this would be a minus sign. And then just to make things clearer, I multiplied the whole row by minus one. I hope you can follow me in your mind. Uh, so this minus, this original minus sign gets a positive sign and uh, this one minus a gets converted to a minus one. 
You know this, if I have A minus B and I want to change the signs, I just take B minus A. So that's what I do. And then, the, the, well, the advantage is um, I have, this was the first time that a certain term appeared uh, containing A, A minus one, then A minus two, and the same two terms reappear here. Okay, so I, I don't want to have uh, five different terms with A. So they are all the same, um, except for this one, which I could also easily have changed to A minus two by, yes, by changing the sign in this row. I didn't do this, but just look here, because that's, that's again, very important. We can now, right away, we can be sure that A minus two is not equal to zero uh, due to this, um, requirement to, due to this um, uh, declaration here. So this this factor is is not zero, but this factor could be zero. And now this time, if this factor is zero, you know the the theorem of of zero product. It means zero times something is zero. So again, we would have immediately another zero row, but only after elimination. And this time, in the same moment uh, when this gets zero. Also here, it's the same term, it also gets zero. So then it would be zero, 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 and this is a clean zero row. So for this case, which I now denote here, A equals one, we even have a clean zero row here. And uh, now important, uh, in, in, in this moment, I'm allowed to fill in A equals one everywhere else where A appears. And this is a big advantage to get rid of A, right? So I put a equals one here, which means this is a zero, zero. And this one is two minus one, which is one. And then I'm done because this is already um, a submatrix in diagonal form. So I al already reached the end form of the gauss jordan elimination procedure, uh, which is the same, roughly speaking, as before in the, in the, in the example before. Um, and then everything I need to do is to read out the general solution. To make to yes to make this clear again, this is a zero row for the last unknown, which is called x3. We did not change any columns, so x3 is chosen arbitrarily equal to lambda element r, and and the other two are easy, uh, like one times x1 plus one times x3. You know, but x3 has been renamed to lambda, so it means x1 plus lambda equals zero. In other words, x1 equals negative lambda. And the second is even easier, x2 equals one constant. So it's similar to the situation which we had in the uh, exercise before. Um, in the end, I can also put this in vectorial form. So it's, it's, it's a solution line again, but I, this is just a really, really bad sketch about it. Don't just ignore it. And um, now, mm, this was the easy part. <laughs> The hard part is remaining, um, and it starts right now because we have to handle the remaining case where a neither e is equal to two nor equal to one. So now, from now on, we must demand that a is not equal to two and not equal to one. So all other values of a, including zero and whatever, um, are now still open, okay? And only then we will be allowed to proceed eliminating in the third column, because now this is not a zero row anymore. And this is a point where you could be stranding. It, 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 uh, the, the danger is, is given that at, at this point, if you don't take care, you will get terms which are oh, really not nice to handle, uh, except, if you recognize that this is a row where you can easily reduce to lower numbers by dividing the whole row by this number, a minus minus one. Remember, from now on, neither this term is zero nor this one. This one, because we, you know, um, we made clear that a is not equal to two and not equal to one. So this is a number unequal zero here and here. And we can divide the whole row by this number, so it's 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 gone, and that's a very big advantage. Uh, the only thing that remains, because otherwise we we would have a quadratic uh, expression of a. This is really not nice to have. Um, and now in this case we get zero zero 
this stays, of course, you know, I divide by this one, um, a minus two, and then a minus one by itself, uh, divided by itself is equal to one. And now we can go on eliminating, which is not really hard anymore because uh, this is uh, in German, uh, this should say um, divide by, let me see, divide by a minus one, okay? Um, and then we can proceed. And you see it's nice here because this is our working element, our tool, and here it's just the opposite number. You see, uh, it, it doesn't matter which value a um, now uh, would, would have. This is definitely uh, the opposite number to this one. So we just have to add lines. And I do this, I add the third line here. And so I get one plus zero is one, zero plus zero is zero, two minus a plus a minus two, cancels, gets zero, and zero plus one, of course, is one. In the second row, um, uh, it's, okay, that, that's the hardest step. We have, these are neighbor numbers, you see? So they are whole, and no, not, not even whole, but uh, you know, they are, <laughs> they have a distance of one. Even if they are whole numbers, they don't have a common divisor. And, and so that's, the only way to do it is to multiply this line by a minus two, and then to subtract the a minus one times the third line. That's it. And so I get zero. Okay, zero stays zero. That's 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 fine. But then I get this one times a minus two minus nothing. So just one times a minus two, it's a minus two. And here, uh, if you believe me, it's a minus one times a minus two minus a minus one mi uh, times a minus two. So it gets zero, that's fine. But don't forget this one. This is one times a minus two minus a minus one times one. If you get it done in your mind, it's a minus two minus a minus one. If you remove the parentheses here, you have a minus two minus a plus one. A minus a is zero and minus two plus one is my minus one. And that's what we get here. And then finally, we 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 made it because um, we managed to um, get the whole coefficient matrix in diagonal form. You see it here. So there are only non-zeros on the diagonal. Everything else is zero. And the final step is to divide this row by its diagonal element and this one also. And this results to uh, fractions on the right side, which means the following. Now that's important. We, in, if you would if you would, okay, first thing is, this is a unit matrix. It means that we can just read out the solutions from here. So definitely, that's it. We have a unique solution, which is, depending on the value of A, X1 equals one, X2 equals minus, um, yes, um, the inverse value of A minus two, and X3 equals the same, but with a positive sign, yeah? So that's it, but don't, Mm, yeah, mix it up with a solution line because if you, it might be um, uh, your idea now uh, to look at this by varying the value of A and to, to, to look at the graphical representation of this solution depending on A. And you will find with a little uh, experience, you will know this would like, mm, roughly speaking, it would be of a type of hyperbolic form, curve, hyperbolic curve in the 3D um, vector space representation. That's a fact, but this does not mean that this is not anymore a, a linear system of equations. You must know that um, underdetermined systems of linear equations always have linear um, solutions like a solution line or a solution plane. So, um, but this one, graphically represented, is not at all uh, a linear curve. The reason is that this is not even a, a solution line. It's just a point in the vector space valid as a unique solution for a given value of A. And if you vary the value of the built-in uh, parameter A, of course, you may get a curve, whatever it is. But uh, it does not um, mean that anything is violated regarding the linearity of the 
system of um, linear equations. Okay, so that's a that's a unique solution. I should uh, I should really denote this here. Um, unique solution uh, for every value fixed value i must say of a um but don't forget a uh, let's say but a not equal to one um and not equal to two so in the end we solved the whole system for any possible case uh, uh, by the way, one possible case here is a equals zero. Okay, if a equals zero, then my solutions you can see here are one, one half, yeah, minus one by minus two is one half, and minus one half. So these are regular solution numbers. And that's it for today. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>